Hello, Stacy Murphy here, still in Brooklyn with some very loud trains going by. It's springtime here in the Northern Hemisphere, and I often get asked about growing seedlings indoors. So I thought I would take a look at my friend's seedlings in her basement. She's asked me, you know, they don't look so good. She's asked me what to do. So let's go on down and see what's going on. All right, so we're heading down into my friend's basement in Brooklyn. And while I don't have time in this very short video to show you everything you need to do to grow healthy seedlings indoors, this is a really useful case study from somebody who has tried to grow seedlings. They aren't looking so good. And we can look at what this person has done really well and then also things that this person could improve on in order to have better results because there are some issues with these particular seedlings. So let's take a look at this quick video. So essentially she's got her setup with her trays underneath grow lamps and you can see she's got three lamps that, that are fluorescent uh, T5 bulbs. She's got the light hanging from the ceiling so that she can raise and lower that lamp uh, depending on how tall the plants get because you really want to keep the lights just a couple inches off the top of the plants. You don't want to burn them by letting them touch the light but you want the light just above the plants. So she's done that really well. And the trays she's used, she's used really smart trays. They have holes in the bottom of them so that water can uh, come out and drain out the bottom when necessary. And she's got secondary trays that capture that extra water so she can see when there's excess water. And also some of that excess water can wick back up into the trays. Uh, and then she's also done something right. She's got her tomatoes on the left and they're in taller uh, trays. And so what that means is that she's got more space for her seedling roots for the tomatoes. Oftentimes you keep tomato seedlings in trays for quite a while and you have to keep increasing the size of the cell. So she's already uh, put them in a slightly larger container so she might only have to move them into a larger container once versus multiple times. So she's done those things correctly. The other thing she's done correctly um, is that she's laid out her crops in rows so that she knows what everything is and just to give you a sense of what she's planted here she's got some tomato seedlings uh, on one side they're all in the same kind of container and we'll talk about this in a minute but you'll see that the leaves are purple and then uh, she's got in her other tray she's planted a row of okra a row of peppers a couple rows of flowers a row of eggplant a row of nasturtiums and then a row of fennel, some okra, and some more peppers. So she can tell which ones are which when they are babies. Before they start to sprout their true leaves, you can get a sense of which ones they are. Now you'll notice some issues here. Uh, in the beginning of the video, you saw that there was purple leaves on the tomato plants. And it wasn't just um, the purple stems, it was actually purple leaves. And we'll, we'll look at that in just again in a moment. And, um, and then you'll also notice that if you look at the plants, the okra looks nice and green. The flowers are a little bit light green, but fairly normal uh, for their type. But then this nasturtium has a lot of yellow going on, right? So the lower leaves are getting very yellow. And then you'll notice also that the fennel is turning a little bit purple uh, there on the left-hand side of the screen. If, you don't, if you're not sure what fennel looks like, it looks like dill, like the tops of dill, basically. So she's got some issues going on here, right? Things are looking good. She's got plants, but they look like they have some issues. So um, what might those issues be and what might be contributing to her tomatoes turning purple and her leaves turning yellow? Well, one thing that's going on here, and I'll show you the soil in just a minute, she chose to grow these in outdoor soil and it's very heavy and you'll see that she's actually got algae buildup. You can see this green buildup on the top of the cells. So that's a signifier to me that things are too moist and too humid. Um, and what would contribute to things being too moist is that the, the growing medium that you're using is holding on to too much water. And so let's just take a look at her growing mix real quick. And look at the top here, it's pretty incredible. She's got lots of rocks in it. She's got lots of bark from maybe um, random mulch. Um, so it's a very heavy mix. And when I asked her what she used to grow these, she said that she used um, mostly soil uh, from her garden and then she added in some vermiculite and she added in some compost. So let's talk about that. So when you're creating seedlings indoors, when you're growing seedlings indoors, you want a light, night, a light uh, mixture that drains well but also holds on to water. And two elements help to do that. One is vermiculite, which she added. That helps to hold on to water. 
but then perlite is often used as a way to help drain water and so she doesn't have any perlite here. Now combine that with the fact that she used soil from her garden which isn't recommended for seed starting mixes. It's, it's very heavy. Uh, it tends to clump and hold on to water too much. It's not very lightweight. Um, so a lot of people use uh, coconut coir instead as a way to have a lightweight medium and they add perlite, vermiculite, and a little bit of compost. That's a typical homemade seed starting recipe. Um, but here she used the soil. She didn't sterilize it either. Um, and so uh, any pests or any diseases that are in that soil are a potential pathogen for these plants. Um, so it's a little bit dangerous what she's done here and there, she's starting to see some effects of it. So she got her plants to sprout, she got um, some plants to shoot up, but now what's happening is you saw the algae that was forming on top um, and let me just do one more picture of the soil. Um, so she's got a very thick damp soil and so what's happening and I think what's happening is that in one, on the one hand, the plants are starting to reach an age where they might need a little bit more nutrients. About uh, you know four weeks into growing your seedlings, they start to run the course of the nutrients in that compost that you've added, and you might need to add a little bit of fish emulsion. And you're seeing the effects of those nutrient um, deficiencies as yellowed leaves and purple leaves. Um, and so the plants aren't getting necessarily all the nutrients they need and so adding fish emulsion, using the back of the bottle to look at how to dilute fish emulsion and add it to seedlings specifically and it, it varies by the bottle so you want to check out your particular manufacturer. So that's the one hand and on the other hand the soil is just too darn heavy and too darn wet and it's weighing down the plants and it's possible that there's no air in this mix and so the nutrients aren't able to enter the plants because it's so heavy. There's no airspace for that water to go up into the roots. And then you'll see here again, this is another image of the soil. You'll see again, you'll see pebbles on top. Those are very large and heavy. And then you'll also see what's a little bit alarming is the stem that is just a little bit to the right of the center of the frame is starting to turn brown near the bottom and it's starting to shrink and kind of tip over. That's the the starting signs of what might be a disease called damping off, which means that it's a fungal disease. Uh, it's a fungal disease which is spread through excessive water and specifically in indoor seed uh, trays. So she might be having too much water, and now she might even have a disease problem, which is unfortunate. And so it's unclear to me whether that really is the first sign of it, or whether that's just a a, a stem that's a, not very strong. So that's something to watch out for. And so you don't want your plants to be overly wet because you can get that damping off. Now let's take a look at what else is going on. So she's got this algae growing on the top of each one of these um, cells. And when you try to pick out this seed starting mix to see what it looks like and see what it feels like, first of all, it's really um, uh, clumpy and like concrete. And then when you pull off, when you try to pull it out, you get like a, the top of it comes off. Sorry about this camera work. I'm trying to talk and uh, shoot as I do this. Um, but you get this top crust that, if you notice, just the top came off. Um, and so now I have just the top in my hand and I'm looking to see if it's got a nice quality as a seed starting mix. And it's more like soil. And um, you know, baby plants, when they grow in this kind of wet um, soil, they just don't do as well. And so really you wanna lighten up this whole mix. Um, I would recommend not using your garden soil, but using something like coconut choir instead. Um, and then if you look at you know the rest of that cell so that was like the top that peeled off really easily and I go to try to get the rest out it's not held together at all the way that um, you would expect with a seedling growing in it it's more like a slurry of concrete so the consistency of this is very um, very wet so what I would recommend for her um, you know, the, the lamps have been doing their job. You want to get the plants as large as possible before you put them out into the field. And here in Brooklyn, it's been cold. The, the other night it dropped down to 40 at night. So it's too cold to put your tomatoes out unless you've got some sort of hoop house, greenhouse, or cold frame or something warming those tomatoes up. 
Um, but you could put some of the other things out. You could put the fennel out in the cold weather. You could put the um, nasturtium out in the cold weather. Those would do just fine. But the okra, the peppers, and the tomato are going to have to wait. So in order to uh, get these plants to the stage where you can transplant them safely, I would recommend to her to add a little bit of fish emulsion. Um, and I also recommended to her that she take the plants that she's not transplanting out into the field, uh, to take those plants, put them into a slightly larger container that had a more like a seed starting mix, a lightweight mix where these plants could really thrive. And, um, and then the ones that are going out into the field, I recommended to her to harden them off. And so that's something where you're getting them accustomed to the outside. So once again, just take a look at her setup. It's pretty cool. She's got the double trays. She's got the lights. Notice the three lights. That's awesome. A lot of times I see people just have one lamp and like part of the plants are good, but the other parts are not. And then she's got this hanging mechanism, something to lift and lower the lamp. And for her, this is an easy setup where she can just pull on that string. So, um, all right. So that's a little case study about growing seedlings indoors in Brooklyn. And I'll just wrap it up by saying that oftentimes I see people try to grow seedlings on their windowsill. And Usually you just don't get enough light. I really recommend having a simple setup like this. All right, Stacy Murphy here talking about growing seedlings indoors. And uh, please leave your comments below if you have some suggestions for this person. Would love to hear them. If you have anything similar that you've seen with your plants, what have you done to correct the issues? All right, see you on the next video.